Grand Theft Auto 5. Ever heard of it, Dreamer Boy? Despite being a total underground release, GoTA 5 went on to sell exactly 69 more copies than the Bible, also known as the Good Book of Genghis. So, uh, yeah, pretty big fucking deal. And it's a pretty good game, I guess. It's got a map bigger than Simpsons Hit and Run, graphics better than Crisis Benchmarks on YouTube, and gameplay that's like a very chill blend of like Uncharted, Drake's Lagoon, and Driver. You are the the car. You're the car, dude. I'm talking cities. I'm talking counties. I'm talking lakes. And I'm talking strip clubs. <laughs> Game's got it all, dude. If John Mann was on the cover of the game, I mean, I'd, I'd probably buy it every goddamn year. It's got like every car you could want, minus the one that your sister's boyfriend had in high school. Just kidding, that one's in here too. Guns, grenades, sticky bombs, white people, black people, grass people, church steeple. Basically what I'm trying to say is the game is set up for so many awesome things to happen. But too bad the story mode sucks. Yeah, that's right, YouTube. It's your boy, Skinny J, a.k.a. The Ruthless, a.k.a. Butternut Squash, a.k.a. The Brooklyn, New York-style Brooklyn Pizza, hey. And I might say a couple things y'all might not agree with. So basically, everyone knows that running around, doing whatever the fuck you want in the game is, like, obviously the best part. And I think even Rockstar has to know that when they make these games. So because of that, it's almost like the game is split up in these two sections where one half is, you know, do whatever you want, do fucking 360 no-scopes in a car, and the other half are, like, the linear, like, movie, mission, Rockstar, like, trying to trying to do some crazy like story shit but i i don't really think that's how it should be because the open world and the missions could get together and have a baby and it'd be fucking amazing and don't get me wrong some of the missions can be pretty they can be pretty cool but i still feel like most of the time it's just a bunch of hand holding linear dog shit it's like fine that explosion was cool oh we just killed a bunch more cops Ooh, there's another cutscene where the same two shitty characters have the same conversation over and over while the game comes up with another reason to just kill a bunch of cops and steal more money like you know it's it's cool if games like that have a story but to get away with it i mean it actually has to be like a good story right this is more of an opinion part of it. I mean, I think the story's absolute wiener donkey butt shit, but <laughs> I know some people like it. But that's not really what I'm really like trying to talk about or accomplish with this dumbass YouTube video. Uh, basically, just trying to say that the game is, I mean, it's like a goddamn playground. There's so many things you could do, but the game with the missions, they they have like one way of doing it and they have like a specific order of doing it most of the time. So it's like, if it's a playground, don't tell me to go on the big slide first, then fall off the swings, then cry a bunch and then fight someone's dad. Let me play in my own way with a little more freedom and then let me, let me fight Mr. Hendrix whenever I want to fight him. So like, just to, just to give you an example, what if instead of telling me exactly where I gotta kill a dude during a mission and how I have to kill him, just give me a time and place and I could totally choose my own method. Or maybe put a dude I gotta take out on top of like a skyscraper for some reason and then I gotta find a way to get up to him. I don't know why the hell he's up there, but he ain't gonna get a chance to explain. <laughs> The game would allow for so many damn possibilities in that scenario. It's like, alright, I'm gonna fly up to him, but how do I do that? Airplane. Where do I get that? Airport. Oh shit, the airport is locked off. Ramp time. Game didn't tell me to do that though, I did that. And then I parachute down, submachine gun that dick's not. And then the mission's complete. But for the exact same mission, I could have gone an entirely different route. Say I want a missile that fucking dick's not. Alright, I need a jet. Oh shit, only place to get a jet is an army base. And now there's this whole like submission of figuring out a way to get into the army base just to get a jet. And then, you know, that's like an accomplishment on its own of like, oh shit, I did some badass shit. Maybe parachute it down, maybe drove in, I don't know, and get the jet. And then you get to complete your actual mission in a badass way because you figured out this other thing you could do. Like, I feel like there's so many opportunities in this game to do stuff like that, but instead it's just, you know, it's just a bunch of linear shit. Like, if Rockstar wasn't trying to make a movie inside their game, and instead was just trying to make the game part, like, so much more amazing, it, oh, it'd be incredible. I'd fucking... I wet my pants, I didn't need a new pair of pants. And on, I mean, 
On another note, if I wanted to watch a bunch of assholes rob a bank, I'd probably just go watch Heat. GTA 5 seriously just wants to be Heat a lot of the time. I mean, you got the Michael, you got the Lunatic, and you got the... Great ass! So I guess to summarize what I want to say about GTA 5 is that Rockstar knows how to make an open world. I mean, they do it better than anyone else. They make these giant worlds that are so detailed and fucking like you just want to explore all of it, but the missions don't really make use of that. I mean, Rockstar probably thinks that they do, but they're usually just linear action sequences disguised as non-scripted set pieces that are obviously supposed to happen. And that was a lot of technical words one after another, but just hang in there with me, chicken. GTA 5 is such a sophisticated game in terms of its scope and beauty, but it treats its players like children with the stupid, easy missions and its shitty jokes and lack of thought or effort from the player. I guess they gotta have that mass appeal though. But enough about GTA 5. Now I want to study mental queer bald kids 5, the pants I stained. MGS5 is such a sour turd for longtime Metal Gear fans. The story is total wiener piss donkey shit, and it barely even wraps itself up at the conclusion. And alright, before you say I'm a hypocrite for complaining about story after dogging on GTA 5 story, just Prior to Bald Kids 5, Return of the Bald, Metal Gear game stories were a big part of the game, and typically meshed well with the gameplay. The games had so many damn cutscenes that if you were a fan of the game, that usually meant you had to like the story too. I mean, you kind of had to if you wanted to make it through MGS4. <laughs> Shit was like Gone with the Wind if it went down on Apocalypse Now, and then immediately gangbanged all of the Harry Potter movies. I'm talking like... Fucking so many damn cutscenes, but I mean that's also to be accepted in the MGS series If you didn't like it, you'd go play Sliver Cell or maybe just go watch the Cell games <laughs> But in Metal Gear 5 <laughs> The pants are stained. It's like they threw all that shit out the window and as a mental queer fan I was kind of bummed I guess but as a fan of like actually playing video games, I was stoked to find out that MGS5 is like 90% gameplay if not more. So remember how I was saying that GTA 5 has like the sick ass open world but shitty missions? MGS5 is like the exact opposite. The open world and mental queers, very bare bones and empty. The enemy outposts located in the game are all very similar and there's not a lot going on inside the world other than like the main missions and the side ops. I mean, you might see a few trucks driving around here and there, but the outposts all feel very independent of each other. It feels like in this game, the enemy outposts are there purely for you to fuck with them. You never see two separate armies fighting with each other, and you never see non-enemy characters. It all just feels like a world that could exist without you, unlike GTA 5. All of that being said, the game gets away with most of that because the missions are fucking bonkers, dude. I mean it. This is a game that really does let you approach your objective in, like, a huge variety of ways. Either stealthy or not so snaky. It's a game that really does reward creativity, and it encourages you to really think outside the box. I mean, fucking, literally. You can beat the shit out of a dude by going outside of your box. How MTV2 is that? Alright, so Exhibit A. The mission requires me, Agent Cody Danks, to rescue a prisoner from an enemy camp. I say, alright, do I want to drive in with some C4 on my car? Maybe bail out at the last second? Load these dicks knots with lead all while fucking balls deep in heavy combat armor? Or do I want to climb a nearby hill, scan the area so I know where all the enemies are, and then sneak in undetected to retrieve the dude in there? No one option is better than the other, and like, yeah, there's a ranking system in the game that mainly bases the score off of how fast you beat the mission, but both options are still equally as viable as the other. And even within each of those two options, there's so many fucking more options. You can ride in on a horse instead of a car for more mobility. You can fucking snipe all the dudes from afar and watch them all shit their pants in terror. You can go in the camp completely unarmed and take all the dudes out by using their own weapons against them. You can listen to Linkin Park and tell your dad to stay out of your room. I mean, I think you get where I'm going with this. The options are endless, even if they all lead to the exact same outcome, saving that prisoner. And because there are so many ways to play this game, that means it can be as hard or as easy as you want it to be. Find yourself way too overpowered? Try beating a mission with just smoke grenades. A little smoke oh. The game getting too hard? Maybe steal an enemy tank and deploy it later when you're in a dick pickle. 
This type of player freedom is so damn enjoyable, and when executed as well as it is in MGS5, it's well received by critics and fucking jakeys alike. And the silencers in the game actually fucking work, unlike GTA 5. So, yeah, the gameplay is pretty damn solid. Snake. <laughs> gotcha. Alright, so I feel I've covered basically everything I wanted to say about these two games individually. What I love about them, what I didn't love about them, and what I fucking think they could do better, I guess. Now think about what would happen if these two games both had a little too much to drink and made some sweet, sweet, triple-A, big budget love. I'm talking about some game banging. <laughs> Baby, that's right, you heard me. I'm talking about some video game sex. So what would the offspring of GTA 5 and MGS5 look like? Honestly, this could potentially be like my favorite game ever made. Just to paint the scene real quick, hold up. You got GTA 5's beautiful open world. The vehicles, the driving, the police, the NPCs, the city, the fucking hookers. I, I mean, the hookers can the hookers can come. They they can come. I don't care. Combine all that with MGS5's rock-solid open-world gameplay, stealth mechanics, enemy AI, and wide variety of lethal and non-lethal weapons. I mean, hot mama. Just imagine the kinds of missions that would be in this game. That first mission that I described, that airplane skyscraper bullshit, that shit would be right at home in this love child. And if the stealth mechanics and silenced weapons from MGS5 were in this game, god damn, losing the cops would be so much more fun. Like if a mission required you to lose the cops at the end of it, so you lead the boys in blue to a parking garage. Once at the top, you crawl out of your car, throw some stun grenades, knock out them bitches, and then get in a different car before leaving the parking garage. I mean, that's just one example I thought of in like a second, but it'd be fucking amazing. If you've played both games, just instead of all these examples, just imagine doing any of the badass shit you've done in MGS5 in GTA 5. Infiltrating enemy territory like a goddamn ghost. Using C4 to set up traps for enemy convoys. Thinking about how you're going to assassinate someone, coming up with a unique ass method, and then actually being able to do it. GTA 5's map really is a sandbox that it's like begging to be played in. Having the open world freedom of MGS5 to carry out simple objectives in any creative or shitty way you want would feel right at home in Los Santos. All of the cars, bikes, helis, planes, guns, bombs, knives, hookers, and everything else would be at your disposal. And I'm certain that no two people would have the exact same experience playing the game. And that's really sort of what a game should be at its core, right? If every game of Uno you played was the same, you'd be pretty fucking tired of Uno by now, right? And I mean... Shit. Uno doesn't even have DLC. You ain't gonna get a goddamn season pass for Uno. I mean, not yet. Yo, Uno! Call me, we gon' be rich.